Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting Parkway Hyundai, and I'm checking out the completely redesigned Hyundai Kona in the limited trim level. It's an all-wheel drive vehicle. Fantastic. Really impressed with it. You got to check it out. This vehicle sitting on 235-45 Kumho tires wrapped around 19 inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Cyber Gray Metallic and very impressive. Uh, it's one of those vehicles that kind of stand out from the distance and uh, really Really like it, especially in contrast with this uh, black cladding and that we have here on the side. You got the cladding here, and it kind of you know matches the front with all the matte black. Now it has a now this portion right here is not the same body color. That is like a silver, like a matte silver color. Uh, you have that across the front as well as the flat black. Now this one is a little bit different than the Kona inline. Uh, it has this kind of solid structure right here. It does have the active grill shutters right in here that open up when the knee's cooling. There's also the 360 camera. You can see the camera there on the front. Parking sensors across the front as well. It has a really nice accent light across the front. It goes for LED, goes from one side to the other, complements the style of the vehicle nicely and also accents the width of the vehicle. Now it has a full LED projector headlight system with a really cool looking turn signal as well. You're looking at the profile, you can see that flat black is extended from the front here around each wheel well across the base of each door. Uh, the center pillar right here is also a matte black as well. And then you kind of have like this crisscross design back here. It's pretty neat. Now it has body colored handles and the side mirrors, the upper portion anyway, are body colored as well. This is what the key looks like, and it's a full proximity key. It has the lock, unlock, remote start, and a panic button here. And there's no physical key inside. Uh, it does have uh, the external physical keys that you can carry with you if you want. They're kind of small, uh, but it does give you the ability to unlock the vehicle you know, in a physical manner versus just the electronic manner. Also on the Limited, you have the ability to open up the power lift gate and park in and park out. Basically, this will move the vehicle forward and back. Uh, so if we remote start the vehicle, once we remote start the vehicle, we can press and hold the forward or the back buttons here uh, to move, actually move the vehicle without getting in. So we can press, and if the, if the wheels are turned in any way, then it will straighten them up and go forward. Now, as soon as you let go of the button, it stops. Press the back button, and it basically does the same thing. It just goes backwards. And you see the reverse lights are on, the brake lights are on. Uh, it also has the parking sensor sensors active front and back. So if there's something in the way like me, it will, even if I'm holding the button, it'll sense that there's something there and it will stop the vehicle and put the emergency brake on or the parking brake on and then put the four-way flashers on. Uh, so it is a fairly safe system as far as moving the vehicle forward and back without actually being in the vehicle. So as soon as you let go of that button, it will come to a complete stop. As long as you have this full proximity key with you, uh, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's on the outside of the door, within a close proximity of the door, you can lock the door by pressing your hand or your finger over this little sensor right here, indicated by that dimple. Uh, and then to unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle here. It senses your hand position, but it also senses the key on the outside of the door and unlocks the vehicle. There's also a physical key location behind this cover. Uh, so you have to slide this cover off and it's right behind there. You can see the doors go almost go to the bottom of the vehicle. So right in here, there's a seal. Kind of keep that threshold a little bit cleaner than it would otherwise be. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom, but almost. It covers up that threshold nicely. Now here's the inside of the passenger side door. I really like the color, the interior color. It's like light gray. Uh, looks fantastic. Kind of brightens up the interior and I really, really like it. Uh, so it's basically a monotone basically a view right here like all the same color except for that handle kind of makes it look really classy uh, so this is a hard touch this is soft touch kind of like a vinyl material this is kind of like a rubbery vinyl type material um, soft touch as well uh, but most of the door is a hard touch surface this is enclosed so you can utilize that as a pocket then you have the larger pockets there at the bottom no fancy seal plate there in the threshold uh, it does have 
manually adjusted seats here on the passenger side, but it does have a height adjustment as well. Now these are heated and ventilated seats. The seats are a simulated leather and um, feel really nice, nice and supple. It does have the cloth here on the edges right where it meets up with the hard plastic. And these are heated and ventilated seats with the perforations there in the center and then the smooth leather there on the outside, quote unquote leather. Now you notice it has a long dash here and then the four dots. Uh, so if you're familiar with Morse code, you might uh, understand that. The four dots is an H for Hyundai, which is pretty interesting. It's on the steering wheel as well. Plenty of leg room here in the front. Uh, the floor mats are not in place, but they do have a place to hook in so it doesn't slide around on you. This is a hard touch plastic right here and it has a non-locking glove compartment. Uh, pretty good size, smooth plastic on the inside as well. Really like this little quick access little shelf right here with a lip on it. Uh, and it's ribbed in there on the inside. Uh, so that way you can put stuff in there and it kind of holds it in place and also keeps it from flying out when you floor it. Uh, but yeah, it's really nice to have a visually be able to see something when you set it down so that way you don't forget it especially especially if you're just going for a short trip you just want to put something down keys phone whatever mail uh, that's a really good spot and then the dashboard is a hard touch non-reflective surface and i really like the way they integrated the this vent right in here with the style of the vehicle that's pretty cool Entering and exiting the vehicle, there's lots of room here in the front. Uh, headroom, legroom, all that stuff. And also the seat is actually really like perfect right off the ground. So you can get in and out without climbing in or falling in, that kind of thing. Uh, and then the back door is a little bit smaller, uh, but the swing of the door is nice. And then a little bit less room there for the headroom and then right in there. But overall, it seems like it's fairly... It's not a big deal getting in and out. Uh, it, it is not as easy as the front for sure though. And in the back, inside of the back door, uh, basically the same styling with all the same color, hard touch, soft touch, soft touch, hard touch, pocket, pocket. It's much smaller threshold back here. Uh, and then you see the floorboard goes down quite a ways. So you kind of gives you that chair feeling, your knees aren't sticking up in the air as much. Uh, that helps out a lot. Also, the seating surface is quite big. It has the net pocket on the back of the passenger seat. There's a hard touch surface here, but not on the driver's seat, which has the hard touch as well. All right, so these are perforated seats back here, but there's no heated or cooling uh, options. And then you have the uh, per seat attachments here. It's fairly easy to get to. They're kind of right in this little cre crevice here armrest with cup holders and this is nice and soft that lifts up out of the way and has some perforations on the other side that's kind of neat looking climate control vents there as well as two usb c charge ports and a little tiny tiny cubby right there there is a significant hump there in the center it is flat on top though that helps out slightly Take a look at the back of the vehicle. It has a flat black roof rail up here. There's also a gloss black uh, shark fin antenna. It's kind of right there in the center. And then right below it is the third brake light uh, integrated into the rear spoiler. And once again, we have that like silver color. It's like a smoked chrome type uh, thing. And you can see how it kind of like swoops down and kind of underlines the windows as well. So pretty cool looking does have the privacy glass back here, the rear wiper, and then we have a tail light that goes all the way across, LED tail light that goes all the way across, uh, accent light, this rear looks really nice. And you have a combination of standard bulbs and LEDs back here for the tail lights. Parking sensors back here as well, we have more of that silver color and flat black. And the backup camera is right here in the very center, which is nice, but it could be a little bit higher, a little bit better integrated. Uh, but as it is, it's okay. The exhaust is well hidden. Okay, so we can use the key or we can push a button under here to lift up the power lift gate. So you can press that button, use the key, however you want to do it. You have the button there to lower it and then there's hard plastic 
on the underside here as well as the sides of the cargo area is also a hard plastic. And then it does have this removable shade as well. Uh, but this is the cargo space if you have all the seats occupied with passengers. Um, and it's fairly good. I like the way it has a, like a super flat floor and it has some bag holders here. There's one there. Uh, there is some tie downs. There's a little subwoofer back here as well. Another tie down. You see a single light there on the left side. Probably needs to be improved there <laughs> as far as the light. A little storage cubby there. Uh, there's also a spare tire with tools, which is pretty cool. And you can kind of lower this load floor a little bit lower, so it kind of kind of rests right on that spare tire. But you can see it's just a few extra inches. But if you need a little bit of additional height, you can do that. Uh, or you can use this subfloor area for additional cargo space and kind of put some stuff out of the way, um, especially stuff that you're going to carry with you all the time kind of helps out to you know kind of shove it under the floor so that way you don't see it it's not in your way all the time these seats fold down it's a 60 40 split and you can fold down one or the other to add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space uh, or you can fold them both down and have a wide open space let's say you're out and about and you want to take the shade out of your way and you don't didn't take it out to begin with uh, there's a real easy way of doing it so basically you just unhook it there from the top and then you unhook it from the bottom there just kind of pull it up and then you slide it down and then you can see there's another place for that to hook into right there uh, so that way that kind of presses up against the back seat now you have the additional height you have a place to store the the, the shade in a nice way that's out of the way and it almost takes up no room there lowering the lift gate it has a little button here just press that and it comes on down. Now, if something's in the way, or if just you need to stop it, just put your hand there, or if it touches something, it's gonna go back up. It's not gonna like crush a shopping cart or anything, uh, but it does come down at a safe level, and it's, it's fairly safe as far as that goes, but you wanna watch out for fingers, especially young kids. It has a locking fuel door, and it's here on the driver's side, and it has a traditional cap, tether and a place to hang the cap here on the inside of the door starting it up as long as you have the key inside the vehicle just press and hold the brake and press this button you don't have to hold it you just press it here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat now you notice the floor mat is not in place but it has two places to hook the floor mat to keep it straight in from sliding forward on you there's the accelerator brake pedal and the footrest which is really nice let's take a look under the hood to open the hood, there's a latch right here in the very center. Just reach in, move it to the left, and lift up. And it holds it up for you, which is nice. Insulation on the underside of the hood. There's also seals across the back and front. So you can see a heel, seal right there, but also right here. Kind of hard to see, but it is a seal right there. Helps out with airflow, noise, that kind of thing. Insulated firewall as well. Insulated battery. And we do have some heat shielding back there on the firewall because it is a turbocharged engine, 1.6 liter turbocharged direct injection engine. The turbo is back here. Now this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, but the orientation of the engine is like a front-wheel drive. And it has an eight-speed automatic transmission back here. The blind spot indicator is here on the side mirror, a little triangle right there. And it illuminates when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, the front two windows are one touch up and down. And then the back windows, they go all the way down. But you do have to hold the switch in order to roll them up and down. And the door switches, door locks are here. And then to adjust the side mirrors are right there, a little pad. Right? You just pick a side, adjust it with the pad. Power seat here on the, pass on the driver's side, unlike the passenger side. Uh, and you can go up, tilt, all that stuff, tilt the back, and then a two-way lumbar adjustment. The lift of the steering column, this is a fuse box cover, so that's not a pocket or anything. You can open up the power lift gate here. Electronic parking brake is engaged here. Dimmer switch for the interior gauges is also here. And then this is the traction control. Default is on. You can turn it off here if you need to spin tires for whatever reason. Downhill descent control is here as well. Has a tilt, telescoping steering column. 
that you lock in place right here. It's really easy to get to. I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall. And I have the driver's seat all the way down and all the way back to give you an idea of the potential legroom here. Uh, so it is a little bit too far back for me. I would have to pull it up slightly in order to drive safely. So if you're a little bit over six feet tall, shouldn't have a problem driving this vehicle. So the steering wheel, uh, it has like this little bit of a bump right in here. It's not a flat bottom, but it kind of widens the bottom, kind of like a grip, similar to the top, but it's on the outside. Kind of gives it a unique look. Feels comfortable and it does give in a hand. It's not super hard as a rock. Uh, and the thickness is nice. Now the thickness varies depending on where you hold it, but, but overall it's a, it's a nice looking steering wheel. Now this one does have the paddle shifters, so you can shift through the eight gear to ratios. To the left of the steering column is the cruise control settings. So you can turn them on, turn the cruise control on here, set, you can adjust the speed up and down, and then you can resume and cancel by pressing in on that little toggle switch. You can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using this button, and this is to toggle on and off the uh, lane keep assist system. Now this pages button and this OK and this, this scroll wheel right here corresponds with the screen. We'll get to that in a second. Here on the right side is the volume for the radio. You can also press it in for mute up and down this is for changing the radio tracks or this whatever tracks you're playing and then you have the voice recognition mode is the audio source you can cycle through the different audio sources and then there's the phone button for answering and hanging up the same button windshield wiper controls are here on the right side and that's for the front and the back turn signal indicators here but it also has the headlight switch as well uh, so you have off automatic parking lights and headlights there and I like the way it pulls up here and kind of shows you what you're doing. So that way you don't have to necessarily look at this. To the left of the screen, which is your gauges, is this little kind of fabric cover right here. And basically, uh, this is just for looks, but also it is metal, so you can put magnets on it and stuff, kind of customize your, your vehicle. The gauge cluster is basically all just a dig digital screen, and it gives you relevant information your speed, digital speedometer, uh, fuel gauge here as well, and then you have your tachometer, RPM gauge, and the engine coolant temperature, outside temperature, what gear you're in, uh, what the last speed lim limit sign was, status of the lane keep assist, and then right now it's showing this uh, drive information there in the center. Uh, but remember these buttons here, the pages and the scroll wheel, we can change that. We can. When you hit the pages button, you'll see that it's part of a menu system, a three-part menu system. The front, first, second page, and third page. The first page, you can also scroll up and down and get additional information. You can see those little status dots there on the side showing you that there's more information. This is, this is your, your all-wheel drive, how much energy is going to each wheel there. And then go to the next page is just the uh, the digital compass basically and the next one is this is more for your safety systems uh, so this is the status of your adaptive cruise control your lane keep assist system and whether there's a vehicle in front of you and and all that stuff it's going to show you as you drive but right now it's not going to show anything because i'm not doing anything in the settings over here we can change the look of this screen as well uh, so it has style a style b and style c and then we have gauge style, classic, or simple. Classic style A, classic style B, classic style C. So that'd be like a sport type. So you can do some a little bit of customizations there as far as the way the screen looks. Uh, and you do that on this touch screen. Okay, so the touch screen, go ahead and hit this home button here. So you can see it's kind of a split. Uh, between a different tile. So this is the navigation map, this is what your radio is doing, and then you have your phone over here. You can go over here, we have some large tiles that we can select, really easy to identify and read and everything. Phone projection will be your, uh, your Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Voice memo, this is pretty cool. You just hit that and you can just start talking and, and record a, a, a memo where you're, let's say you're driving and you come up with a genius idea you can take a note of it so you don't forget. Uh, check the weather, you have valet mode. Um, 
Hyundai Car Pay, which is pretty interesting. And then you have your setup options here. Uh, vehicle diagnostics. Let's hit that so you can see what it looks like. Takes a second to pull up, I suppose. All right, so we can't retrieve data right now. I guess it's not set up for an owner yet, I suppose. All right, HD radio, uh, notifications will go here. Online manual, this is, is just a QR code. <laughs> I wish it was like had more information here on the screen. All right, so let's look at the setup here. You have all these different options here. Uh, vehicle navigation, sound, and all that stuff. This is where I went to the cluster and did the adjustments there. So let's look at the navigation map. You can do searches here if you want. You can also save different locations as well and you're under save places. Let's look at the radio screen. You can see your presets, favorites. You have AM, FM. Uh, and then of course you have the Bluetooth, you have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, also you can plug in devices to the USB, play off of that. But right now it's just showing what's available because we don't have any of that uh, set up yet. And then your phone, once you pair your phone, you have access uh, to phone book and all that stuff. So you can send and receive calls. Also, you can respond to text messages without taking your hands off the wheel using the voice recognition system. And I like the way it has the, the digital clock there that is always there. It's always in that location, so you know where your eyes can go to look at the time. Uh, you can also set up different drivers here. Uh, so you have different profiles. So you can set up, and this will save your, so like your presets for the radio or, or any kind of specific user settings that will show up in your, uh, in those driver settings. So that helps out a lot, especially when two people are driving the vehicle and they have completely different preferences. Okay, so there is a physical volume knob tuned through the stations, and then you have some physical buttons down here uh, for different uh, quick access links to the, the touchscreen there. Climate control is just below, and then you have the uh, little screen here showing you the temperature, the status of the where you want the fan speed, where you want the air to blow, and all that stuff. Now it does have an automatic function that's three stage, high, medium, and low. Uh, so that's handy um, if you want to have you know it to take over, but you don't want a full blast. So you can lower it down if you want to. Front rear defrosters is here as well, and then you can recirculate the air, or you can have fresh air. All right. So down here is a USB charge port as well as uh, connecting to the USB system as well. There's a 12 volt power supply and then there's a little storage cubby but it's also a wireless charge pad as well. So you can put your cell phone there, charge it if it's small enough to fit in there. It's pretty good size though, this area. And it's rubberized so it doesn't slide around on you. Uh, this is where you'll find the the heated and cooled seats here for the driver and then the passenger. There's also a heated steering wheel and it's a two stage, high and low. And then the cooled and heated seats are three stage, high, medium, and low. Uh, this is where you can turn on the park, the, the camera system, which is fantastic. Uh, so there's two ways of doing it. One is just to press this. Let's say we're just sitting here. We don't want to put it in gear. We can press that button and we can Let's go ahead and push that. Um, so, so this button, when you're just sitting still, it's going to show the camera system front and the, the top down view, which looks really good. It really helps out see around the vehicle. Uh, so we can press that. We can get the different views here on the front, next to the wheels, or the full wide view in the front. We can also get the back view, and then different views there in the back. We can get a 360 view of around the vehicle. And we can kind of move it around, look around. And of course the vehicle itself is not the, it's just a like a rendered version, but it is the area around the vehicle is actually really there. All right, so now that's just when you have, when you're sitting still and then you push the button. Um, but, i go ahead and make that go away. There's another way uh, to see the camera, and that is when you put it in reverse. So here's the shifter here. And basically you just turn this back like that. 
Now we're in reverse. The parking sensors are active here, and then we have basically the same thing except for it's more focused on the back instead of the front. Uh, full camera system, parking sensors, all that's active. Put it in park, we just press this. If we want to put it in drive, we go like this. Now we're in drive, but you notice the camera doesn't pop up. Now if it detects something with the parking sensors, it will pop up here in the front. Or you can press the button here. Now, so now we're in drive, press the button, it shows the top down and also the vehicle here, depending on what we have selected here on the side. But we can go a, we can go slowly uh, and we can see around what's going on when we're going forward. So this is really handy for park, parking tightly or going through tight spaces or just, just clear, just parking and you wanna really nail a parking spot or whatever. Um, it is pretty handy and you can always change the different views if you want to. So you can access this camera reverse, forward, or sitting still without it just being in park. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle. Um, it is handy to have a drive mode here. Uh, you can also lock a center differential so that way you get a little bit more uh, to the all-wheel drive system uh, by pressing here. But if we turn this knob, it's a rubberized knob, and basically we have a snow, normal, and sport. Uh, so now if you just have it in normal mode, it is going to be capable of you know detecting slippage and all that stuff. Uh, but the snow really helps out with you know not having any jerky motion or anything like that. It kind of gives you that you know slow easy acceleration without you know causing a slippage um, and then it has the sport mode just for basically you know higher revs and give you stay in that power band for the engine and, and get a little, little bit of more control of your acceleration and stuff like that uh, but normal mode is fantastic it's fine for everyday driving normal is great all right, so here's some cup holders, um, and you notice the space right in here uh, is flat. So you can utilize this space really good, but you, let's say you don't have a cup or a bottle or anything, you can move these out of the way and have additional space here. You can move this one in, they're kind of spring-loaded, so if you want to pop them out, you just press that button, set the cup down. Real easy to, to uh, initiate the cup holder, basically. Um, but yeah, this whole area right here, you can utilize it for anything. You can stand up your cell phone, it has a little lip right here if you want to use that for that. Uh, this little divider pops out because this area is in, it connects in with this center area. So this armrest, kind of rubbery soft, kind of small, but it does get, it, get out of the way so you can access this little storage quick access tray. And then you have a quick access uh, little area right here as well. Now the divider moving removing the divider probably not the best idea if you're if you want to keep this junky uh, you have a bunch of junk in here because it will slide around this is a smooth plastic so the divider having keeping it there is pretty good um, for most most people like myself that like to have a like a junk drawer type area and then you have the quick access area the separated for the junk area junk area and then you have this to cover that up. So yeah, it's pretty interesting, kind of a little bit of versatile uh, air storage area here in the center of this quick access. Uh, just like over there, quick access. Really like that. Rear view mirror is auto dimming. It's an auto dimming rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming now because they have this shade uh, over the light sensor, which is located here on the back of this right here. And then it has the home link garage door opener controls. So the lights, there's a quick reading lights here here you can turn on all the interior lights there have them all off or have them turn on with the door in that center position there you also also have roadside assistance button here as well uh, with the blue link uh, so this button controls the sunroof we'll get to that in a second the visor has like a vinyl type wrapping that matches the cloth headliner and there's a clip here big mirror and there's a light that turns on manually so you can turn it on if you want it and if you accidentally leave it on when you lift this up it hits it and turns it off. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, basically, pretty basic visor. Now it does extend out as well. But the thing about extending out with a lot of these vehicles is they extend out. This one actually does go all the way to the end. Uh, but some of them extend out to like right there so that you know where the sun's going to be right there in your face. Visor's about the same on the other side. Okay, so the sunroof control. Let's look at the sunroof. Uh, it has a shade that covers 100% of the light, 
and we press gently back on that button and we can just open up the shade, let some light in, press a little bit more and it moves it back. All right, press it again, nothing happens. That's as far back as it goes here. So if you press it firmly, it's gonna move that forward and then it's going to close the, the shade there. But if you press it gently, it'll just close the glass. So it depends, it's pressure sensitive here. Now, if you want to tilt it, um, you can, when the shade's open, you just press up like that and just tilt it up. Press it up again to tilt it back down. Looking at the visibility here in the back, uh, you can see the pillars are quite wide. It does have a little glass, a little window there, but um, overall it's something you will need to get used to, those pillars there. Uh, but other than that, it's not too bad. It does have a pillar there, and just overall it depend on, depends on passengers and all that stuff and headrests. Uh, but not, a, not too bad, not overly bad. Now, it does have the rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system, parking sensors, 360 camera, uh, all kinds of technology to help out with driving a vehicle safely. So it's not really an issue at all. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to Parkway Hyundai here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I'll see you guys next time.